In video four for unit one, we're going to take a look at how to determine the appropriate number of significant figures in calculated values. Once again, oops, once again, these um, clickable links, these are clickable links in this presentation that you can use to help you go to other tutorials. So we have to round off when doing calculations because calculators are gonna often display more digits that are justified than by the precision of the data. And what do we mean by that? Sometimes your instruments are only as precise. Maybe they can only read to one decimal place. Maybe they can read to two. Maybe they can't read to a decimal place at all. And your calculations cannot be more precise than the tools that were used to take the measurements. So we're going to look at this learning objective, determining the appropriate number of significant figures in a calculated result and round numbers off involving, um, round, no, round off numbers and calculations involving measurements. So we know that from when you learned how to add and subtract and do rounding off a long time ago, that the round off rules are if the digit to be dropped is four or less, then all of the following digits are dropped from a number and we do not round up. If the first digit is dropped is greater or higher, then the last digit increases by one. So let's say I wanted to round off 8.43, I'm sorry, 8.4234. If I want to round off to three significant figures, I would drop off this three and the four, and I would be left with 8.42. What if I wanted to round off to two significant figures? I would drop off these three digits and because this is a two next to the four, then the four remains the same, right? So I end up with 8.4. What if I wanted to round off to three, this number to three significant figures? I wanted to round off to this number here. Notice that the eight is greater than five. So I'm going to increase this seven to eight and I'm gonna drop off the eight and the zero. So I end up with 14.8. What if I wanted to round off to two significant figures? That means I'm looking at this one and the four. I don't wanna have any of these remaining numbers. So I'm gonna look at this seven, it's greater than five. So I'm going to round this value off to 15, right? What if I have 3,256 and I wanna round this off to three significant figures. Well, I only wanna keep these three digits here, but I can't get rid of this last place because this number is greater than one, right? I can't get rid of this six and then call it 325 or 326. I can't do that. I have to create a placeholder, right? So. I want three significant figures, so I'm going to look here. There's a six. I want to round this five off to six, and I'm going to create a placeholder. Instead of just getting rid of that six, I'm going to add a zero there. Notice that I use the zero as a placeholder. I could also write this in scientific notation as 3.26 times 10 to the three. Why is it 10 to the three? My invisible decimal place is here. Well, let's go here. My invisible decimal place is here, one, two, three. And because I move my decimal place to the left, my um, power of 10 is going to be positive. What if I want to keep two significant figures? Well, I'll look at this two here. This is a number five. So I'm going to round up this two to a three. I can't just get rid of these two digits. I have to put a placeholder and add my zeros, right? So the value of a large number is retained by using placeholder zeros. Notice that if the numbers are smaller and they have decimal places, you can just drop off those numbers on the end, but not on a larger number. Let's take a look at some, uh, some examples. When I add, right? When you're adding or subtracting or doing some kind of calculation, and let's say my starting, um, amount has uh, six, I'm sorry, has two significant figures, uh, 6.0 grams, 
divided by 2.00 grams. This just means that maybe I use two different um, balances. One balance has, can measure to one decimal place and the other can balance can measure to two decimal places. My value that I get from the calculation cannot be any more precise than our, my starting amount. So if I end up with a value that is a, an exact number, in order to retain, because we know that six divided by two is gonna be three, right? I don't need the calculator to tell me that. However, using the calculator, I'm going to get three. But if I wanna retain the number of significant figures, um, and this is division, we have to keep the least number of sig figs, then I've gotta add a zero, uh, a decimal place and a zero to maintain the number of sig figs in our one of our measured items. So let's do a little bit of practice. How would we round off the first number to three significant figures? Mind you, this is a large number and I can't just get rid of numbers on the end, but I wanna round this off to three significant figures. So I'm gonna start from the left, one, two, three. I need these three digits, but I wanna round everything off. Looking next to the three, that's a zero, so I can, I don't have to change that three. It stays as 2,730 meters. Notice that I can hold on to that zero there. I'm not rounding it off to the one because that would give me a significant digit and I don't need that. How would I round off this value to one? Well, let's find our first non-zero digit, which is a seven. So I wanna keep this seven but I need to round this off to one significant figure. To the right of the seven is a six. When I'm rounding this off, does the seven stay the same or does it go up? The seven would go up because the six is greater than five. Notice that I can't get rid of those leading zeros because they are placeholders, but I can drop off the six on the end. Let's do one more. What if I wanted to, um, represent this value as four sig figs. Now notice um, I've got 3,400. I've got these zeros on the end. How can I represent this number with four significant figures? I got zeros on the end. What do I do for that? Does anybody remember what we looked at when we were looking at how we can maintain or keep significance of those zeros on the end? Yep, you're right. Add a decimal place. Alternately, I could write this in scientific notation, which would be 3.4 times one, two, three, times 10 to the three kilograms. Last question, how, many, how would we round off this value to two significant figures? This is the same number numerically. However, I want to keep one, two, six figs. Do I get rid of these zeros? No, I don't. I can write this in scientific notation that will help me maintain just these two significant figures. And that would be 3.4 times 10 to the three. Why is it times 10 to the three? Because I move my decimal place one, two, three spaces to the left. And that is, and this number is greater than one. So my power of 10 must be positive. One thing to note as well is that if I'm, if my, coefficient gets smaller, which it did, 3.4, my power of 10 is going to go up. If my coefficient gets larger, then my power of 10 is going to go down. Now, let's take a look at rounding off when doing multiplication and division. The rule is that your calculations cannot have more significant figures than the original measured values. So before we start our uh, calculation, we count the number of sig figs in both of the measured values that we start with. We've got three significant figures in 278 miles, and we've got 11.70, which is one, two, three, four significant figures in um, 11.70 gallons. So when we put this in the calculator, we get a larger value, but we've got to round off to three significant figures. Why? Which one is the least number of significant figures? Correct. 
the top. So when we're doing multiplication division, your answer cannot have more significant figures than the value with the least number of sig figs. So let's do an example. To make currant jelly, you use 3.75 cups of sugar that is added to 18 cups of currant juice. How much sugar was added per cup? So when we're doing our solution, we want to know how many um, cups of sugar was added per cup of juice. So we've got to um, divide the amount of sugar by the amount of juice. So we have 3.75 cups of sugar divided by 18.4 cups of juice. Notice that in our given value, we have four significant figures and two significant figures. Which one is the smallest number of sig figs? Is it the 13.75 or is it the 18? Correct, it's the 18. So when we get our calculation in the calculator, we've got to round off to two sig figs. So starting from the left, we count one, two. This six is going to, this digit here is going to be my last digit in my rounded off value. Because there's a three next to it, the six is going to remain the same. So there are 0 0.76 cups of sugar per one cup of juice. And we have two significant figures. Let's take a look at the rule for addition and subtraction. The rule for addition and subtraction is that calculations cannot have more digits after the decimal point than the original measured values. So, or if there are no decimal places, your answer cannot have a decimal place if there was no decimal place in your originating value. So let's take a look at this example. Let's say um, <clears throat> we have a volume that is uh, 3.18 liters and we added a volume of 0 0.01315 liters. When we add these two together, we would get 3.19315 liters, but that's too many digits. The first value has only two digits after the decimal points, and then the last value has five digits. Now, we're not talking about significant figures here, we're talking about actual digits, one, two, three, four, five. Our final volume of water cannot have more digits than the two starting values. So our final answer would be 3.9, I'm sorry, 3.19 liters. We can't have those remaining values at the end. Let's do a little bit of practice. Suppose you weighed 124 pounds before dinner. How much will you weigh after dinner if you eat 1.884 pounds of food? So your after dinner weight is found by adding your original weight to the weight of the food consumed. So you start with 128 pounds, I'm sorry, 124 pounds plus 1.884 pounds. Now, when we add this all together, we get 125 pounds. 0.884. Notice that there are no decimal places in our first value, but we have three decimal places in our second value. Your rounded off answer cannot have any, any, um, any digits in uh, after the decimal point because our first value has no decimal places. So our rounded answer would be three significant figures and solve the problem on your own. What do you think it would be? Let's see if you're right. Oh, let's see if you're right. If we were to add these two together, <clears throat> our first number has three digits in three decimal places. And our first number, our second number has two decimal places. Which one um, how many decimal places could we have in our final answer? Well, 
we can only have two decimal places in our final answer. So that gets rid of B, D, and that gets rid of A. Now, when we add these two together, we would get 127.908. Well, we have 908. We would have to round this zero up to one. So our answer would be C.